in the previous few lectures we have discussed in very detail the einstein's a and b coefficient and apart from that we have also discussed the possibility of amplification of light actually <clears throat> you know that when a stimulated emission dominates over the spontaneous emission uh, only then amplified light is obtained and for this the necessary condition for light amplification you have seen is population inversion but uh, how this population inversion will be possible in a laser system and for that what should be the level of the atomic system so in this new chapter our aim is to discuss the laser rate equation which actually determines uh, the uh, rate of change of the number of atoms or the concentration of atoms in any energy level and uh, <coughs> that is determined by the laser rate equations and uh, actually we will see that for the operation of a uh, laser system or for getting the population inversion only three level or the two level uh, atomic system uh, <coughs> uh, in only in the two or three level atomic system such population inversion can be achieved so first of all we will see uh, the discussion on the two level system actually the aim of this uh, discussion is to explain that population inversion is not possible in a two level uh, system in fact this is a very important fact that population inversion cannot be achieved in a two level system but it is possible in case of the three level system or the four level system okay so how uh, you can say that uh, the population inversion is not possible in a two level system we will explain in this uh, lecture in fact this is a very important fact and uh, if you will see the question paper of previous year of uh, public service commission like uh, you know uh, <coughs> upsc you will find that such questions has been asked various times in that examination so now let us consider uh, there uh, there is atomic system consisting of two levels i have marked those two levels by the number 1 and 2 and uh, and as uh, you have usually considered that in the first level uh, that is the energy level e1 the number of atoms per unit volume is n1 and uh, that in level 2 the number of atoms per unit volume is n2 now we incident uh, an electromagnetic radiation of frequency nu on this uh, atomic system and this uh, incident uh, radiation has uh, energy density equal to u okay as uh, we know that uh, in this condition there is an interaction between the atomic system and the electromagnetic radiation and three phenomena takes place so we will now find the probability rate of the three possible processes uh, during this interaction so as you have learnt in the previous lecture that the number of atoms undergoing absorption transition per unit time per unit volume from level 1 to 2 what is uh, that uh, number of atoms which will absorb the radiation per unit time per unit volume and uh, actually excited from level 1 to level 2 what will be that number you have learnt in the previous lecture that uh, this probability rate is denoted by the symbol gamma 1 2 and this is equal to c cube over 8 pi h nu cube times tsp times u times g of nu times n1 you have to remember this formula although we have discussed this uh, result in the previous lectures but here you have to write it uh, directly so you must remember it as you know in this expression this u is the energy density and this g of nu this is called line shape function and tsp as you have discussed in the previous lecture 
this is reciprocal of the einstein a coefficient and it is called mean life of spontaneous emission okay so uh, this uh, result for gamma 1 2 can be written as w 1 2 times n 1 where w 1 2 has been written for this as you can see in this equation 2 okay now <clears throat> in the similar manner when the atom in the second level that is the higher energy level gets excited by the incident radiation and they uh, suffer transition from level 2 to level 1 then what will be actually the number of atoms uh, which will be which will undergo a stimulated emission from e2 to e1 level per unit volume per unit time so in the similar manner you can write that this uh, transition rate will be gamma 2 1 and that is equal to w 2 1 times n2 but uh, as a, the absorption probability and the stimulated emission probability both are equal okay you have seen uh, in fact in the earlier lecture and so you can say that this w21 is same as w12 so gamma21 will be equal to w12 times n2 okay times n2 now uh, in fact uh, along with these two uh, transition processes you know that uh, uh, a spontaneous transition from level e2 to e1 also takes place okay now in case of spontaneous transition there there may be two type of uh, radiations two types of radiations will be emitted actually when an atom suffers a spontaneous transition from higher energy level to lower energy level then it is possible that uh, due to this transition uh, electromagnetic radiation will be emitted that is called actually radiative transition and at the same time there is also a non radiative transition actually the energy lost uh, the energy Uh, lost by the atom during this transition in the form of translational kinetic energy or rotational or vibrational kinetic energy actually that energy is actually absorbed by the surrounding so it is no, it does not appear it it is not um, emitted so in this condition there uh, during that spontaneous transition there are two type of uh, radiations first one is in fact a radiative transition which in 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 case of which uh, radiation is emitted and another is non radiative transition uh, in fact in that condition the if the emitted energy is not in the form of electromagnetic radiation but it gets absorbed by the surrounding medium in the form of kinetic translational kinetic energy rotational and vibrational kinetic energy so if we consider that this a21 is a radiative transition rate from e2 to e1 okay and s21 this is non radiative transition rate from e2 to e1 okay in that condition the total transition rate from the level e2 to e1 uh, in case of a spontaneous transition if we denote that total transition rate by T two one, then that T two one will be equal to A two one plus S two one. Okay. So in this condition, the number of atoms which will undergo a spontaneous transition per unit time, per unit volume from second level to first level, that is given by U two one equal to T two one into N two. Okay. so uh, in all, in all these three processes what will, what is actually the uh, <coughs> number of atoms undergoing a transition from energy level 1 to 2 or 2 to 1 we have calculated now finally you can see that at what rate actually the number of atoms in energy level 2 and in energy level 1 will change with time that is called actually rate equation so you can see 
as the number of atoms at any time t in uh, second level was n2 in unit volume so after these three type of transitions the rate of change in number of molecules number of atoms present in this second energy level will be what this will be gamma 1 to see here gamma 1 to is actually the number of atoms received by this uh, second level from the first minus gamma 2 1 this is actually the number of atoms decreased from level 2 and minus u21 this is actually the number of atoms again decreased from level 2 so when you will subtract this gamma21 and u21 from this gamma12 then you will get the net rate of change of atoms in the energy level 2 so dn2 is written as gamma12 minus gamma21 minus u21 now let us substitute the value of these quantities you have seen that this gamma 1 2 is equal to w 1 2 into n 1 and gamma 2 1 is w 1 2 into n 2 so w 1 2 has been taken as a common factor and u 2 1 you have seen this is t 2 1 into n 2 okay now in the similar manner you can also find the rate of change of number of atoms in the first energy level as you can see this first level gains atoms from the downward transition uh, due to the stimulated emission and uh, due to the spontaneous emission so there are two sources to of gaining atoms by this uh, first level and uh, again uh, due to the absorption transition uh, <coughs> the second level actually gains energy and the number of atoms in first level decreases so uh, this gamma 1 2 is the rate of decrease of atom so this has been written as minus gamma 1 and due to these two tr downward transition number of atoms in n1 in in first level increases so gamma 2 1 and u 2 1 has been written plus okay I think you have understood. So dn1 by dt, this will be gamma 21 minus gamma 12 plus 21. Gamma 12 plus u21. Okay. Now again, put the value of this gamma 21, gamma 12, and u21. Then you will see that this is equal to w12 n2 minus n1 plus t21 into n2. Now, if you take a minus sign here as a common factor, then this will be minus W12 times N1 minus N2 plus T21 into N2. Okay. Now, let us add these two equations, equation number 6 and equation 7. Now, we are get, uh, going to add these two equations. You can see, after adding, we will get D dt N1 plus N2 equal to 0 because you can see the, the RHS of equation 6 and 7 when will be added, you can see that this W12N1 minus N2 and this minus W12N1 minus N2 will cancel out. Minus T21 into N2 and plus T21 into N2 will be also cancel out. So D D T N1 plus N2 is 0. So you can say that the, this sum that is N1 plus N2 is constant. And if you consider that n1 plus n2 equal to n, then this n is constant. Okay. Now, when actually equilibrium is, is established or you can say when there is an STD state, then actually the rate of change of atoms in any level uh, becomes zero because the number of atoms in any level will become fixed. So in a steady state, you can see, uh, say that dn1 by dt will be equal to dn2 by dt and that will be equal to 0 because in that condition, number of atoms do not increase or do not decrease in any level. Okay. So in a steady state, you can equate dn1 by dt to dn2 by dt. You have seen that dn1 by dt is equal to this much. 
दिस इज डब्ल्यू वन टू एन वन माइनस एन टू माइनस टी टू वन इन टू एन टू एंड डी एन टू बाई डी टू यू हैव सीन दिस इज माइनस डब्ल्यू वन टू इन टू एन वन माइनस एन टू और प्लस टी टू वन इन टू एन टू ओके नो टेक दिस टर्म इन एल एच एस एंड वेन इट विल बी इन एल एच एस इल बी इट विल बी एडेड टू दिस टर्म एंड दिस विल बी टू डब्ल्यू वन टू इन टू एन वन माइनस एन टू एंड ब्रिंक दिस नेगेटिव टर्म इन आर एच एस देन इन आर एच एस देयर विल बी टू इन टू टी टू वन इन टू एन टू ओके नाउ दिस टू एंड दिस टू विल कैंसिल आउट एंड यू कैन सी आफ्टर रीअरेंजिंग द टर्म्स एन वन माइनस एन टू डिवाइडेड बाई एन टू विल बी इक्वल टू टी टू वन बाय डब्ल्यू वन टू ओके नाउ डिवाइड दीज टू टर्म्स एन वन एन टू बाय एन टू सेपरेटली देन यू विल सी यू गेट एन वन बाय एन टू माइनस वन इक्वल टू टी टू वन बाय डब्ल्यू वन टू ओके सो एन वन बाय एन टू दिस विल बी इक्वल टू वन प्लस टी टू वन बाय डब्ल्यू वन टू एंड वेन यू विल टेक एल सी एम यू विल गेट दिस इज डब्ल्यू वन टू प्लस टी टू वन डिवाइडेड बाय डब्ल्यू वन टू सो इफ यू राइट एन टू बाय एन वन देन एन टू बाय एन वन विल बी दिस मच दिस इज डब्ल्यू वन टू डिवाइडेड बाय डब्ल्यू वन टू प्लस टी टू वन नो एज यू नो दैट बोथ ऑफ दीज टर्म्स डब्ल्यू वन टू एंड टी टू वन बोथ ऑफ दीज क्वान्टिटीज आर एक्चुअली पॉजिटिव and if uh, these are positive then denominator is greater than the numerator in rhs of equation 1 and and as denominator is greater so after division you will get a number a smaller than 1 so this n2 by n1 is less than 1 it means n2 is less than n1 it means uh, there is no population inversion so you can see that in a two level atomic system due to the optical pumping when you pump the atoms in the lower energy level by the incident of electromagnetic radiation which is called optical pumping you cannot obtain the situation of population inversion because population inversion means n2 should be greater than n1 so population inversion cannot be achieved in case of a two level atomic system we can clearly say okay so now it is clear that it is impossible to achieve the condition of population inversion by optical pumping in case of two level atomic system okay so you will see in the fourth coming lecture that never any laser system will work uh, in case uh, <coughs> will work for two level energy uh, two atomic level uh, system no laser will work in every laser you will find uh, that uh, the atomic system is either three level or four level or more levels okay so uh, i hope you have understand that uh, for population inversion two level uh, atomic system is not sufficient so definitely population inversion can be achieved only when the atomic system is either three level or four level or more levels okay so uh, in fact in the fourth coming lecture we will discuss the three level uh, atomic system in which you will see that population inversion can be achieved so any laser system will work either on three level atomic system or four level atomic system because for laser operation population inversion is a must condition okay